So ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you the long-term key to ending poverty in Kenya lies within the stock market? Well, let's find out as we are joined on stage by Chavakali High School and Bunyore Girls High School as they dissect the motion that reads, the youth must invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty. Proposing the motion, we have Chavakali High School and opposing the motion, we have Bunyore Girls High School. All the best to both teams on stage. A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Our journey to a thousand miles is towards total poverty eradication. We have many steps before reaching there. These many steps are the many ways of combating poverty. But first, let me take you through the first step in eradicating poverty by proposing the motion that the youth must invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty. The youth, according to the Kenyan constitution, are the people who fall between the age bracket of 18 to 35. To invest is to put money into financial schemes with the expectation of achieving a profit. The stock market is a system where buyers and sellers trade shares of publicly listed companies. Therefore, investing in the stock market involves purchasing shares of publicly listed company, companies, mutual funds, and or other stock market instruments with the expectations of earning a return. On to my first point, historical performance of the stock market. In the long run, the stock market has more than once overperformed or outperformed other investment methods like bonds, savings accounts, and real estate. According to, according to Centum, taking real estate as an example, the, re, the returns from stock markets from 2019 to 2022 has experienced an increment of 12%, while the returns from real estate has experienced an increment of 4%. So why should we hold back our youths from investing in this profitable investment? Tell me why. If you have a good reason, then come and tell me after this. My second point, compounding interest. Early investment allows for the power of compounding interest to work. Compounding interest is where returns generate their own returns, greatly increasing the investment's value. According, sorry, according to NYSE, this is the New York Stock Exchange, an investment of $1,000 at an annual return of 8% will grow to approximately 221720 dollars over 40 years due to compounding interest. And by doing this, the youth will have started investing at a young age, but in the long run, they will have gotten enough money to sustain them for a long time. Having said all that, Hope you will join us in proposing this motion. I rest my case. Ladies and gentlemen, today we delve into a topic that has the potential to transform our, fi our financial society. Investing in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty. Imagine a world where young people don't just think about financial stability, but actually build it. So allow me, Janet Avisa from Bunyore Girls, to start by defining the motion. The youth must invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty. What do we mean when we are saying that the youth must... What do, I, what do we mean when we say investing? Investing simply means placing your money in a particular use where you expect greater returns at the end. And stock market simply mean exchange... Stock market simply mean exchange of markets where activities like buying, selling, and sharing shares of publicly not, and sharing shares of a company are held publicly. Uh, to, a long-term strategy to combat poverty in terms of stock market simply means a long-term investment of your money. And as we all know as youths, we do not have patience to wait. To combat poverty simply means to control poverty. Because as we all know, poverty cannot be eliminated. So, 
is investing in the stock market the perfect way for our youth to take? No, it is not. And why am I saying this? Because investing in the stock market can lead to risk of losses. Investing in the stock market can lead to risk of losses. Why? Because without proper knowledge, youth entrepreneurs can actually invest in the stock market without knowing how this stock market works. And as we all know, they might think that investing in the stock market is a good solution. They put there the money that they are supposed to build their futures, and at last they get losses. And why do I say this? Because according to, according to a report by JP Morgan in 2020, approximately 40% of individual stocks suffer a permanent 70% permanent 70 decline from their peak value. So as we see, in the stock market, we are not gaining. What we are doing in the stock market, we are losing. Another reason why I'm against stock marketing for our youth is because of lack of diversification. Young entrepreneurs might lack the knowledge. Young entrepreneurs might lack the capital to diversify their investment adequately, increasing exposure to risk. According to a 2019 report by Federal Reserve found that only 38% of millennials have the vast portfolio. This can make young investors more vulnerable to market fluctuation and potential. Ladies and gentlemen, according to this report, we are showing that we are being shown, we have said, our, our colleagues have said that, have said that stock market promotes, promotes elevates poverty, but no. At, according to this report, it shows that, that actually, actually investing in the stock market is going to lead to losses in, instead of elevating poverty. Thank you. A wise, archer, a wise archer once told me, if you aim at the king, well, aim for the chest and make sure not to miss. Because if you do, then a great archer aims for your heart. And that's why I, D. Kenzokulima, from the great Javakali High, I'm here to firmly propose this motion on the table. To the first speaker, you came here and told us that these stock markets cannot be successful because of the lack of diversity. Well, let me tell you something. According to a research conducted by Oxford University in 2023, it states that 17% of youth take tech programs that actually boost them in financial literacy, leaving the other 82% disadvantaged. But that's no problem, because this here is one more thing. According to statistics by the National Bureau of Statistics in Kenya, people who engage in stock markets in Kenya have actually increased their earnings by 10%, 10% due to the financial, financial literal programs provided by the stock markets. And you also saw, said something about diversification. Well, it happens that you might not have understood the motion about stock market. Stock market does not deal only with one thing. Let me tell you why. According to Statista, the Forex trade program has actually invested, has actually got the lowest amount of money one can spend is $10, and from the $10, you can actually earn more and more and more and more. Remember, $10, and you can also go to up to $200,000 with only $10. These people are exposed to a variety of business plans and opportunities. Now, to my first point, it leads to financial literacy and responsibility. People who engage in stock markets are exposed to different business opportunities, different challenges, and they are taught on how to counter them. If you don't believe me, you can take that out with the National Bureau of Statistics in Kenya. Then, according to Investopedia, 20 years of 10,000 worth installments grow to up to 70,000 over 30 years. And 10,000 shillings worth of investment grow to over 80,000 within 60 years. So this shows that if past people start investing at an early age, they are likely to go to higher levels of income. The stock markets do not only provide them with the idea or with the skills, it also trains them how to save for the better future, for the better tomorrow. So let us not attack this motion from the wrong perspective. Let us not deny our youths the way to the future. So join me as we fight for the right thing 
for our society. Time is a considerable factor and we need to learn how to save it. The term long term in the motion really triggers my saddest emotions. I wouldn't want to invest my money at my 20s and then get to receive my profits when at I'm 60, 60 years old. According to a research done by Volga in 2022 reports that um, investing in investing stocks in their people investing stocks in their 20s at an average retirement savings at $500 by the age of 60 that is when they will receive their profits so on to my first point lack of financial knowledge many people and i repeat many people in the society lack financial knowledge about how to invest in stock market so if you lack knowledge on something how are you going to do it for example in school if you lack knowledge on how to conduct a proper chemistry practical will you get the marks no you will not so kindly if you lack knowledge on financial if you lack financial knowledge you will not be able to get the proper decision and to make proper investment choices for you to be able to receive good profits in the end and let me repeat this is a research that was done that most youths lack knowledge on finances and hence they can be they most probably make the wrong choices during stock marketing on to my second point opportunity cost Investing in stock market really requires a significant sum of money. Which, where, where are we going to get this money? This money is going to be derived from important areas such as education or even entrepreneurship. This will potentially limit opportunities for young people. When we take money from entrepreneurship and we take money from education, these people will not even get money to go to school, will not get money to, um, in, to have entrepreneurship skills. It will limit some of the young people. So investing stock market is a very bad, it is not a proper way since it takes too much time. It is it takes a lot of time and I wouldn't want to waste my time when I can use another shorter strategy to combat poverty. For example, you can use bonds to, con to combat poverty. Bonds, for, let me explain to you what bonds are. Bonds are, is a fixed amount, a fixed income interest, a fixed income instrument where individuals lend money to, money to the government at a certain interest rate for a for an amount of money. For example, in Kenya, under the CBK, giving out, we have the Central Bank of Kenya giving out bonds where we have two types of payment. We have medium and long-term strategies. This will enable people to save time and still get their funds. Thank you. For those who have had the mandate of studying physics, they already have already known the motion, the state, and that says light travels faster than sound. I guess this is why people look bright before you hear them speak. In front of you is Abdul Majid Yusuf from the Great Chavakali here to propose the motion that states youth must invest in stock marketing to improve to combat poverty. According to the first speaker, she actually said that when you actually invest in stock market, you lose but do not gain. But do you know there's a 21 year old who is called Dan Leg who has actually profited from uh, investing in the stock market but the second speaker said that the youth actually invest now and what if you want your money now the youth is investing now for a better future long term does not mean that it is right away when your first speaker was defining the motion she said that long term was after some time right and i tell you long term is after over a time over decades and this actually means when you invest you don't expect your money right away and the second speaker also came here and said that bonds should, be re should replace stock marketing. But did you know that stock marketing actually performs better than bonds? So with the first speaker's last point, I'm going to start with my points. She said that when a person enters stock marketing, it can actually lead them to losses. And my first point says stock marketing is a well diverse investment platform. So I say, when 
a person invest in stock market, one can actually, ha a person has high risk management and this leads them to financial success. When you have financial success, this leads to a reduction in poverty. My second point is that wealth, dist wealth distribution and in equal inequality is actually reduced. Did you know that by the youth participating in over in um, uh, stocking market, they actually reduce the gap between the rich and the poor. The youth might have minimal money, but by them participating, they actually minimize the disparities between the rich and the poor. So right now. I'm going to take this limited time to summarize my team's points. When my, first, when my second speaker said that it leads to uh, capital and economic growth, when a person invests in stock markets, it actually leads them to get some money in return. And when they get this money in return, they use it to actually grow capital and some places. So according to World Bank, it actually says that when a person actually gets money back, they're actually going to use it as a capital, which will lead to Im improvement of businesses and starting of some businesses, which will actually reduce the cases of unemployment, leading to reduction in poverty. Thank you, I rest my case. Guys, 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 ladies and gentlemen, why should you put all, why should you put all your eggs in a basket of long-term strategy of stock market to, and you might end up with an omelet of broken dreams and shattered dreams. So you've heard of the term long term, long term, long term. You are a youth at your 20s. You are a youth at your 30s. And they say that in 40 years time, you'll be able to get your money in 30 years time, in 65 years time. So let me ask you a question. What about your short term needs? I am a youth. I still need to invest in my education, my housing fee, my renting fee. All of these I have to invest in. I have to pay them. But you tell me that in 40 years time, after investing, I will be able to get an amount. In 40 years time, 40 years. So tell me, where am I going to get the money? Tell me, where am I going to get the money? We also, these are, according to statist statistics that is in US, it states that, it actually states that in the US, a lot of students who have taken part in the long-term strategy of stock marketing have ended up with a lot of debts that is around $33,000, which they don't know how they are going to pay. So when you get the money in 40 years, let me ask you, will you use the money to pay the debt or will you use the money to make some issues? How are you going to cover the debts that you have taken? There's something very new, uh, there's a fact about stock marketing, is that it is very unpredictable. Very unpredictable. So when you invest in stock marketing, there's something called fluctuations. I think that is not a new term to you. Is that correct? So guys, when it comes to fluctuations, it means that when, when investing in the stock market, it may actually lead to potential losses and some fluctuations that will lead to more debt burden, that will lead to more poverty. According, you have heard of the COVID-19 pandemics that you recently had. So in the 2020 COVID-19 COVID pandemics, there was a 34% loss Underline the word 34% loss because of this stock marketing that resulted from stock marketing coming with the pandemic that is COVID-19. So guys, you know, stock marketing isn't that bad, yes, but it has some very bad disadvantages that are very detrimental that will lead to our failure in the end. But I have an answer. I have a better reward. That is high interest saving accounts. In, according to Canada, that is IMFT, 65% of the Canadian students invested and they got a lot of benefits because of investing in high interest saving accounts. Thank you. And now we we'll, should be heading on to our closing remarks. So team proposition, you have one minute for your closing remark. Knowledge is classifying a tomato as a fruit, but wisdom is not including it 
in a fruit salad. And that's why I, Dickens Wakulima, I'm back here yet to convince you as to why we should propose to this motion. Dear, dear, dear opposition, I don't know whether it is or is it not you who's not understanding something on investment. Investment doesn't mean denying yourself. It is saving and using little to prepare for the future. Then, to the second speaker, you spoke of it being expensive. Well, I had just come from the stage saying that Forex requires a minimum of 10%, which will actually multiply slowly, slowly, slowly into millions. Is $10 really that much as compared to the expense of ignorance? Well, with history over, let me show you the brighter future. A mushroom grows with one day, but an oak tree takes days but it is a great oak tree that cannot be stumbled and killed within one day. So it is for you to choose. Do you work smart or work hard? So my dear friends, they also say that girls have ears. So please tell me where you have heard the word expensive from my second proposal. Please tell me and give a valid explanation where she has stated that it is expensive. Guys, when it comes to this stock marketing, we know it has a lot of detrimental effects than its benefits. That is a fact, a true fact that has been proven by very many sources, very many, and they are true. So guys, when it comes to the stock marketing, we see that they say that you've had, you've based on the term, long term, long term. So what I was actually trying to tell you was that in the next 40 years, I am a student, I'm in my 20s, I've stopped depending on my parents. I want to go to university to do my things, but I invest in long term strategy. So tell me, how, I'm going, how, am, I, how am I going to pay? In Kenya, the, the prices of education have actually risen and it is still rising, bringing a lot of cases and a lot of chaos. Thank you. I'll begin by speaking to one, the motion. Uh, the motion is the youth must invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty. Uh, keywords are uh, youth, must, stock market, and long-term strategy. So the burden on side proposition is to tell us, one, why the youth? that if you are speaking and establish a connection between the youth and the stock market and a long-term strategy, there is the burden that you have to focus your arguments on. And this leads me to speak to Jeremy. Jeremy, you are a very good speaker. Your introduction is great, and I love the illusion of, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, and this first step is the stock market. That's a very good way of beginning a speech, and I want to encourage you to keep improving in your game. Um, but then I want to caution you that as the first speaker, you are expected to run a comparative analysis of your argument that tells you, you guys are advocating for the stock market. So let's see why the stock market has succeeded in which countries and where other investments have failed that have been done by the youth. You get that? Yeah, so show us which countries or which context have had youths investing in the stock market and which context have had youths in making other investments and where the youth have succeeded in the stock market. How practical is this uh, stock market investment for the youth? That was the only thing that I needed you to show me. And why long term? Why not other investments? Why should the youth not go into agriculture? Why should not why should they not go into the manufacturing industry? Why not into the service industry? Why the stock market? That is what you need to do as the first speaker. And the only way you can ace this is by data and statistics, because numbers never lie. So once you give us data and statistics that justifies why the stock market done by the youth in which context, that gives you an edge and gives your team a case to run with. Dickens Wakulima, very confident speaker, great voice, keep that up. Now, I want you to be careful not to over-rely on numbers. That says, I advise that you use numbers as complements of your argument. See that? So that you make a case, then provide a justification for it. But when numbers precede your arguments, 
then your arguments tend to be complementary of the numbers so that you end up struggling with justification when the numbers would have simplified the case for you. But you're a very good speaker and you should keep on doing what you do. Thank you very much. I now wish to speak to the opposition, Bunyore Girls, Janet Avisa. A very good speaker. It was bold of you to come in and uh, be, attempt to build cases for your team. But then, like I mentioned, you guys were supposed to tell us why the youth must not invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy. So the burden for you guys is to tell us what then should the youth invest in. Or for instance, providing data and statistics on where investment by the youth in the stock market has failed and where other alternatives have succeeded. That is exactly what I expect of you as a first speaker. And then I would also wish to advise you to find ways of enriching your speech so that you are able to equally connect with the audience. We are advised that as a good debater, find ways of speaking to your listeners. There's a difference between speaking to people and speaking at. What I'm currently doing, I'm maintaining eye contact with speakers from both sides. That is speaking to people. But when I read my notes, and I want to tell you, Janet, that one of the points that you mentioned was risk of losses, lack of knowledge. I'm speaking at you. You get the difference? Yeah. But that was very good. I'll now proceed to speak to Herin. Uh, Herin, I loved how you brought in the what then should the youth do and the issue of them investing in bonds. But then I would love you to look at, uh, to avoid the redundancy. By redundancy, when Janet mentions lack of knowledge and providing, uh, and goes ahead to provide data on um, the financial literacy of the youth, when you come then and still repeat the same point, it then begs the question, is it that there was a lack of preparation or there's a minimum understanding of our, the roles of a second speaker? The best way of approaching debate as a second speaker is, of course, rebutting what these guys are saying. Because when you come in as the second opposer, it means you are coming in after the first, uh, the first speaker side proposition has spoken, right? Yeah. So be careful to avoid redundancy and paraphrasing what has just been said by the first speaker. My advice is going to be one. There are always key terms in the motion that will always need arguments tied back to. In this motion, we are looking at the youth must invest in the stock market as a long-term strategy to combat poverty, long-term strategy. So the heart of the motion here is, apart from the stock market, which are these other long-term strategies that the youth can invest in to combat poverty? That is for Bunyore girls. Did that really come out well? Uh, topic of discussion. Chavakali Hai, again, we are talking about the perspectives, global perspectives, regional perspectives, national perspectives. Those are key ingredients if you want to demolish your opponents on the stage. All the best. It's a learning experience. Thank you.